This can happen to any of us. Drug addiction can take your friends, neighbors, or your family. No state has been spared. Uh, the first lady there talking about uh, the opioid addiction uh, the, the problem yesterday at the White House. So I wanted to play that. And uh, Rose, why, why were you smiling when I played that? I just out of interest. I just I just like her voice. I don't know, just the way she speaks. I couldn't agree with you more. Whether you like what she says or not, Seriously, yeah. it's fun to watch her say it. Mm-hmm. I, I would I would agree with that. I'm trying to see if I can get in some trouble with her, but I apparently clearly can't. Uh, let me welcome my my guest, Mike Ferguson. And I think Rose, Rose, you're blushing. Yes. A okay. Little, all right. So I just wondered. I, I'm just checking. I, I'm, she I is know. just a little bit there. <laughs> I thought it's I saw, hot in here. Oh, yeah. is that it? Well, make sure that furnace is turned down over there. I was dying in here yesterday. Thank you, Mike Ferguson from the Show Me Institute, joining us right now. Mike, how are you? I am well. Yourself? Happy Friday, man. Oh, finally, yes. No kidding. Saw you at the uh, Chris Arps wedding last weekend, and uh, that was a a nice event. It was beautiful. And I now mean, he's down in Pensacola, Florida somewhere with his toes in the sand. So I saw his uh, picture on Facebook or I think it was Facebook, you know, he and his uh, now wife, now we can call D- Becky his wife. Exactly. Having a nice dinner with uh, holding the drinks we're up gonna, the camera. Or... We're going to give him a, a real treat when he comes back on Tuesday because Jason Church was playing the music obviously right. at his wedding and he recorded Arps serenading his <laughs> wife. So we're going to compare and contrast a little Sinatra and Arps on Tuesday when he comes back. Yes. Ought to be I, fun. I've got you under my skin was the... Yeah. Was, yes. Chris may get under your skin if you hear him singing. I'm just saying that, but but he's got more guts than I do because I, well, you know, I wouldn't have been able to do that. Because uh, Rachel couldn't make it to that. And so she you know, asked me, how was the wedding? And I slipped up and mentioned, well, yeah, and Chris serenaded Becky singing <gasps> some Frank Sinatra. And, and you got, you're getting married soon, dude. I am. Uh, in Jan- yeah, in January. And she goes, oh, are you going to do that for me? And I went, no. <laughs> I'm sorry I brought it up. No, no. We don't want to torture the people in the I don't no. know about you. I'm not saying, I don't know what kind of singer you are, but Terrible. we wouldn't want to torture Chris the people Chris Harp's in the a better singer than I am. That's how bad it is. Here's the thing about it. And I get a little, little inside baseball here. The radio station has a uh, its own Christmas party every year, and of course, Jason Church, DJ Church Dog, uh, brings his equipment up there, and uh, you know you can get up on stage and sing if you want to. He will invite you to pick a song and get up and sing. And you know, some people are pretty good at it, like Katie Bailey, who who was like, oh, was it The Voice or one of the shows she was on? It was something like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So so she um she's really good. So you're hoping it's somebody like that. But as the <laughs> evening drags on and the alcohol flows. <laughs> yeah. It, it, it can get ugly. Can I just tell you that? <laughs> but that's not what uh, Mike is here to talk about today. We're talking about um, education and the fact that there's a survey floating around yeah. talking about teachers' pensions, right? Oh, yeah. We, we uh, Dr. Mike McShane, our director of education policy, and Dr. James Scholes, who's one of uh, who's a senior fellow with, uh, with uh, the Show Me Institute, and then he's also a professor at uh, UMSL. They decided, you know, we're seeing a lot of pension problems. Look at Illinois. I mean, look at Detroit. Public pensions had a big part in both of those bankruptcies. Let's look to see what our teachers know about their pension system, and uh, let's look to see what they prefer. So they just went out and and said, you know, let's do a survey. Let's see what they know about the pension system. Let's see what they want. Let's see what they don't want. And the NEA caught wind of the Show Me Institute trying to survey and even – talk to teachers or not even talk to them just get their opinion and they sent out a, a, an alert saying do not answer this this is from the show me institute and actually in the paper that we have because it just completely fouled up the uh the results i mean they put a clamp down because on it. heaven forbid you find out the truth about the right. health of the pension right right exactly or find out whether <clears throat> or not teachers are aware of it or find out what teachers want we're we're over here saying Guys, we're we're a little concerned. We really need to take care of of the re, of the retirees. We may need to look into making some reforms. I remember having Mike in here talking about teacher pensions, and yeah. maybe this is before. I'm assuming this is before this this questionnaire was sent out. Uh, and I got some angry phone calls here from teachers and retired teachers saying, you keep your hands off of our pension and blah, blah. I don't think I never got the impression in talking to Mike, who's a former educator, right. that it's a, about trying to get anybody's hands on the pension, but simply making sure that it's healthy. Be- right. Because correct me if I'm wrong, and, and I've got family members who are in education, 
Um, teachers may not, some of them, unless you're an administrator, don't get paid a whole lot through their careers, but they've got one of the best retirement deals going. They can retire with 75 or 80% of their pay, depending on how many years they teach. Yeah, in their last three years, I mean, assuming you meet the threshold, if the last three years is how they calculate your benefits for life. So you work at your, you know, let's say, uh, you know, the classroom level for 17 or 20 years, but those last three years you get promoted to vice principal or to principal, that's what they're going to base your your retirement on. So it's really generous for some you people. Bet. Right. Yeah, what we're worried about is that, I mean, we're worried that the money won't be there. We're saying we need to ask questions about this to say maybe this defined benefit thing may have worked in the 50s, may have worked in the 70s. It may not work now. Let's at least find out what teachers want because t- one part of the uh, the surveys that we did get back, and again, not statistically – you can't you can't do an academic use it study, because it, it they, was, they they right eclipsed it right there yeah. are a lot of teachers who told us yeah i wanted to maybe move to another school or move to another thing but that would have messed up my retirement because of the way the system is set up our worry is that teachers won't have the pension funds in place when they go to retire if we're promising to take care of them or we're promising a retirement plan let's make sure it's there so how healthy is the pension system do we know i mean is, is that something heritage has looked at in terms of a percentage of funding it's uh, we're at about 84 percent right that's now. that's healthy isn't it it's not bad but it's ticked down in the last year okay and so if the somebody's retired right now from the public school pension system yeah, they're probably probably in decent shape especially if they're older and they've been retired for a while if you're a young teacher right now you really ought to be concerned uh, especially if you think that you might want to move districts like from the st louis district to another district because st louis has its own pension system the state has its own pension system and if you move or you don't finish your career as a teacher you go into something else then you may end up losing you may end up losing a lot so, of your retirement so the alternative i'm guessing if you're talking about moving away from a defined benefit would be something like what was discussed with social security well more like a 401k 403b ira type of thing the thing that most of us have the money would still be deposited for you by yes. the dis- it would yes. just be in your account right that you could access once you retired, yes. and it wouldn't be the state of Missouri's uh, teachers' pensions sending you a check each month. Correct, and in a lot of cases, you can decide how aggressive, how risky, how safe you want to be with that yourself, and you can take it with you. Yeah, and and and, and the reason there's pushback on that is that, and I, teachers are as guilty of it as anyone else. I'm imagining for years in this country, people have had the government take care of that stuff for them, and they don't want yeah. to be responsible for it. No, and uh, the thing about the the pension systems we're seeing down the road, and that's all we're trying to do is wave the flag saying, listen, we got to at least make sure the long-term health of this is in place. We want teachers to have their retirement funds sure. in retirement. And one of the things that uh, we're looking at is this empowers teachers and teachers, all like all of us across the board, we're living longer. So the way that the system used to be in the 50s and 70s, it may not work now just because people are taking such much more money in retirement over the course of more years. It's a good point, yeah. which is the, the issue with defined benefit plans around the country, right? Right, exactly. So the big question is, why doesn't the teachers union even want their teachers' voices heard on something like this? Power. I'm, I'm, I can't. I can't I mean, imagine what else. It would, can, what other reason yeah, it would we be? We can. We can guess. I mean, we we if don't come can, to a conclusion. If, We're just pointing out, and we put the the email on the website. If you go to showmeinstitute.org and look up the study, we just published it word for word. We didn't redact anything. Good. Yeah. Well, hopefully people will get on there to, Herit- uh, to showmeinstitute.org, and um, I still have the heritage page up here, and um, and um, read that and look at the story. There's obviously lots of other stories on there right now, w- with a. With a critical eye, with a fair eye, and and just look at what the goal. Yeah. Well, the goal is not taking any money away from anybody. Period. No, it's not. It, it's just possibly the need to change the system down the road so that it doesn't get in trouble one of these days. Yeah, if the pension systems run short at some point down the road, somebody still has to pay for it. So school districts or the school system can simply give less money that goes into classrooms or or school buses or something like that, or we can raise taxes on everybody, or the teachers that are now in the system or going to be in the system soon will have to pay a lot more to subsidize other teachers. I mean, there are a variety of ways that that the money could be made up, but the fact of the matter is, is that everybody should be in agreement saying this does impact entire communities and impacts the entire state. 
Times have changed. The economy has changed. We're living longer. At the very least, we need to make sure that we have a healthy retirement system yep. for the people who spend their lives teaching our kids. That's a good point. All right, go to showmeinstitute.org to read more. Mike, thanks so much for your time. You are very welcome. And uh, because I like you all, I am not going to sing karaoke on my way out. Thank yes. goodness. Yeah, we, we appreciate that. High fives that, going around <laughs> everywhere. But we will have to get you an invite. Maybe we'll get you an invite to the station party then. Love to. Absolutely, because you're filling in for Allman and those guys all the Fill time, in right? Filling for Allman, and I have, uh, you know, a, a show that airs on early weekday mornings, too. So Sure. All right. Good. Mike, thank you. <laughs> right. Appreciate it. Uh, three one four.